Welcome to Life in the Slow Lane, where we explore the innermost challenges of just being human. We're all trying to do the best we can, but far too often we stumble and sometimes get lost along the way. Here we explore the wonder and insanity of the human condition, and perhaps find a few solutions that just might make it a little bit better. Hello there, and welcome to The Slow Lane. I'm your host, D, and I'm glad you are here, or still here if you're coming back after listening to part one. Hopefully, most of you already listened to part one of our welcome series. Well, it's not really a series, is it? I mean, it's only two episodes. Is that a series? I I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you already listened to episode one. Not that it's required, but hopefully you did where we talked about the podcast, why I started it, what it's about, and so on and so on. I'll put a link to it in our show notes if you want to check that out. This is part two, where we are more focusing on your host and what my background is and what makes me tick and do the semi-stupid things I do. (laughs) And it may be the worst two podcasts of all the ones I do here. And honestly, to some degree, I hope it is because I hope these podcasts get better. I hope I do better. I'm planning on learning and getting better as I go along. I hope I'll get more feedback from you all as we go along, which will then feed our content and make this better. If our last podcast episode is not better than our first one, then I took a wrong turn somewhere. So this is me and living, (laughs) as you can tell. And I'm going to do that a lot. In fact, I'm going to leave in some of the mistakes I do and some of the problems because this is real. This is me. Yes, I'll still script half of it or 75% of it, but often I will work around the words on the page or I'll I'll elaborate and add something to them, or I will just go off on a tangent and talk the whole time. Right now, I'm winging it and I'm talking with you and I'm liking it. I'm in the basement of my home which I have this makeshift studio here with a decent mic. I'd actually paid for a decent mic. I knew that was important. And then a bunch of audio gear I have left over from my days in bands and playing drums. And that's my studio. But sitting down here, looking at the script now and then, talking into the mic, there's a connection. I've felt this connection with my other podcast, and I know we can feel it with this one too. But it's a connection between just two people. Now, maybe there's only two people out there listening, or one person, and there's two of us. When I say two people, me and that one person. Maybe there will be thousands one day. It doesn't matter because it's still just talking to one person, and that's what I like about this medium. In my mind, I'm speaking to one person. That's it. Just one. And that helps me relax, slow down, get into the flow, and do what comes naturally, which is talking with you. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Again, if you wanted to hear um, part one, please go back and check that out first, that I talk about the podcast. Here, I'm going to talk about me and my background. If this isn't for you, feel free to skip over it or even skip to a certain section There are notes, um, there are chapters listed in our show notes, so you can go right to a section if you want to, or you can skip this one entirely. I'll be back soon, I promise, with brand new topics and discussions that aren't directly related to who I am, what I am, and my entire background. (laughs) But for this one, let's go ahead and do this. I wish I could say I don't like to talk about myself. I mean, that sounds more noble, doesn't it? But the truth is, I could talk about myself for days and days and days and days. But I won't because it will bore you. And I'm going to really try to keep this episode to 30 minutes and not go long. Anyway, I am D.E. Foster, the host of this podcast. I go by D, just the initial. It was a nickname that my nephews gave me when they were young, and it caught on. 
Then when I wrote my book on benzos, I used the pen name D.E. Foster, and it stuck. So people just call me D. One of the things I say about myself, and especially about my background, is that I'm nomadic. I'm a nomad. In 56 years on this planet, from paper route to IT director, I've held approximately 100 jobs. I just can't even seem to sit still. <laughs> Did I mention I have moderate to severe ADHD? <laughs> Big surprise, huh? I mean, I wasn't even diagnosed with ADHD until my 50s. They just thought I was energetic and a bit distracted. And I adapted when I was young and learned how to work around things. You know, one thing I can say about being nomadic is that I sampled a lot of life. And that's not such a bad thing, especially when you want to host a podcast. As for my background, well, I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. Soon moved to St. Louis and then lived outside Chicago for about nine years through fifth grade. I played hockey a lot, started to play the drums, and had a lot of fun with my friends. The usual stuff. When I was about 11, our family moved back to Kansas City, where I spent the next 23 years of my life. I joined Cub Scouts, then Boy Scouts, did a lot of camping in some amazing places, and even got my eagle. I played more drums in band, orchestra, jazz ensembles, you name it. That, that was my gang. That was my group, band. You know, I never belonged to the in crowd in high school. I was not popular, anything but. But I belonged in band. That was home for me. I am very grateful to have had that. Despite a few scholarships, I couldn't afford to go away to college, so I attended the University of Missouri at Kansas City and lived at home. I graduated with a degree in film and video production and a minor in music. Well, not technically a minor in music, <laughs> but that's, that's a different story for a different day. And then I started my career as a student of nomadic science, <laughs> or that's how I like to call it. After working as a video technical director for a couple of years after college, I went a different direction. I soon found myself programming computers for a large telecom corporation great use of my film degree. I know, trust me, my parents reminded me of that, but this was the job I could find and a job I liked for a while. I spent the next couple of decades here and there doing data analysis, developing data reporting systems, and eventually designing enterprise-wide data warehouses. But then guess what? I went in a different direction. Big surprise, huh? <laughs> A few years after moving to Colorado with my wife, I was laid off from a Russian software company I was working for, and I decided to return to my degree in film. After several years, I became a Purdue screenwriter, taught writing at the University of Colorado Denver and the Colorado Film School, and was on the advisory board of the Vail Film Festival for 10 years where I developed their educational program. It was a completely different world from corporate IT and I enjoyed it equally. But then, <laughs> you guessed it, my life went in a different direction. In the summer of 2012, I noticed something was wrong with my health. It turns out I had become dependent on an anti-anxiety medication after taking it for 12 years as prescribed by my physician. I never knew anything about these drugs or that they could cause dependence when taken long-term. Nobody ever told me. And I surely didn't know about the tortuous suffering some experience when trying to withdraw. But I know now. The next 10 years of my life were an odyssey of pain, misery, and unspeakable loss. Can you imagine what life would be like if your nervous system turned against you? And it took months, even years, to heal? Well, for some of us, that's been so withdrawal. I lost almost everything. I could no longer hold a regular job. I couldn't maintain outside relationships and lost more friends than I can count. And I still experienced neurological damage and now seven years free of these drugs. But you know what? 
somewhere in the midst of all that suffering, I found a few answers. A new way to live and a new purpose for my life. I wrote a book about my experience and the four years of research I had done. I started a podcast, and I now spend most of my time working in the Benzo community, helping to raise awareness, educating medical professionals, and supporting those struggling with benzo dependence and withdrawal. Through all of that, I finally learned about my true passion. Above all else, I am two things, a student and a teacher. I love to learn, and equally so, I love to help others learn too. I just love that. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about learning about living together and sharing what we learn with each other. This is the podcast I've always wanted to do. I'm home. So that was school and work with a few minor detours. But what about home? Well, I've been happily married for 25 years now to the best gal a guy could ask for, and I don't say that lightly. She is amazing, and I am a very lucky man. We don't have any kids, by choice, but we've had three dogs. A Great Pyrenees, a Yellow Lab, and the most recent, an Aussie Shepherd named Bear, who we lost last year, and we miss him dearly. Bear was my constant companion during the darkest days of my withdrawal from benzos, and I truly miss that guy. Okay, moving on before I break down here. Right now we're between dogs, and we'll adopt another one soon. But with the difficulties that I'm about to talk about, we've decided to hold off on that for a little while. January of last year, I had to take over the medical and financial care of both my parents which basically took over my life. It was a very long year. In February, we helped both of my folks move into an assisted living facility in Kansas City. And I've been driving back and forth nonstop. My dad had been dealing with Alzheimer's for over seven years, and my mom had been his caretaker. But then she started to show signs of cognitive difficulty and eventually was diagnosed with alcohol-induced encephalopathy, a rapid form of dementia. My mom spent time in five different facilities in just 10 months, and we finally said goodbye to her last November. We now split our time between Kansas City and Colorado, still managing my dad's care the best we can. Much like my experience with benzo withdrawal, I learned a lot last year. But I gotta say, I never want to go through that again. As for my qualifications to host this type of podcast, I don't have any. (laughs) I am not claiming any certification or education or license or anything formal like that. Not in any way, shape, or form. I have no medical or psychological training to speak of. I am just an average guy living an average life. And I'm okay with that. Like so many of you, I faced my share of difficulties. ADHD, anxiety, depression, chronic digestive issues, an alcoholic parent, abuse, etc. And of course, the granddaddy of them all for me, benzo dependence and withdrawal, as I mentioned earlier. But that's just a small part of my story, the darker part. And that is not the focus of this podcast. So let's, let's lighten the mood a bit. Who am I in the slow lane? Well, at my core, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> in all that entails. You know, I used to hate that term. In high school, it's what the girls you liked would say to you when they tried to reject you kindly, which never worked. But that was a long time ago. I've been through a lot since then. And now I love this term. I own it. Because it is who I am. I am a nice guy. I believe in kindness above all else. I like people. All people. I like animals. 
I like trees. I like, <laughs> I like most things in this world. And to be honest, I want most people to like me. No hidden agenda here. No ulterior motive. I like making new friends. Yes, that sounds corny, but I don't care. This is who I am. I'm also what many would call a centrist, I guess. A middle-of-the-road man. I am moderate through and through on most things. If there are two extremes fighting it out on some issue, I'm the peacemaker in the middle. <laughs> I hate conflict. It's always something that's been with me. It's something I carried from my childhood and with my parents. And it's something I'm working on <laughs> of learning how to deal with it better. But I hate conflict. I always try and find a compromise, a solution. I always try and find peace. I believe strongly that no matter how thin you slice it, there are always two sides. And that's a principle that I would like to carry forward into this podcast. If we discuss any issue on here, we're going to look at it from all angles. To me, that is important. And when you take things slowly, you have the time to do that. And that centrist attitude that I hold affects how I view politics and social issues, too. I'm in the middle there, too. I have been independent my whole life, never once declared a political party, nor do I really plan to. Sometimes I've leaned left. Sometimes I've leaned right. I do stand up for what I believe in. And I'll take sides and debate individual issues when I feel strongly about them but I also try and listen to the opposition, even when it's not so easy to do so. You know, that reminds me of an anecdote. If you'll indulge me for a second. In one of my many road trips driving across Kansas last year, I saw a man on an overpass, dressed in camo, waving an American flag, with a sign in front of him that read, Honk if you love freedom. And I honked, and he waved, and I felt good. And then I went back to singing at the top of my lungs to a song titled Totally Fucked <laughs> from the album of Spring Awakening, a Broadway musical about high school sexuality and the coming to terms of who you are and being your true self. And it wasn't long before I smiled to myself because I recognized the conundrum, not just in our society, but more so within myself. None of us are absolute one thing or the other. None of us are absolute one way or the other. We are all a blend of so many different thoughts and ideals and opinions and values to compartmentalize them into one group of people and say, that's me, I don't get that, and I don't understand. But I'll try to. I'll try to. But this anecdote reminded me that within me, I, I love people of all types. I respect people for their beliefs and their opinions. And I'm curious about people and want to know where they come from, and who they really are. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who's experienced some extremes in his life, who learned a few things from those experiences, and who would like to keep learning, to find better ways of living, and who'd like to invite you along for the ride, if you so choose. That's it. That's me. Anyway, so you're still here, huh? <laughs> Glutton for punishment, aren't we? <laughs> if you actually listen to both of these initial podcast episodes from start to finish, I'm not exactly sure what that says about you, <laughs> but I thank you. You know, I know the world is a difficult place these days. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of blame. A lot of negativity. But I still believe people are good. People genuinely are good. We just get 
lost sometimes. We just get caught up in things sometimes. And sometimes we need a reminder of how to find our way back. You know, I'd like to close with a qu- close, close with a quote. <laughs> See, this is me ad-libbing and me leaving in things because that's just fun. I like quotes with a quote. Um, <laughs> I'd like to close with a quote, if you don't mind. Yes, I like quotes. If you're um, going to listen to me ramble on this podcast on a regular basis, you might as well get used to that. I will pull in quotes now and then. This is from one of the books I have littering on my bookshelf behind me. Worn covers, notes in the margin, you know, you know the type. If you've ever seen any of our videos on our Easing Anxiety channel, you will see that bookshelf that's behind me. This is a book from Byron Katie titled Loving What Is. A book I've had on my shelf for some time and one that is pretty well marked up. Perhaps you'll like this quote. Perhaps you won't like the quote. Perhaps you'll hate the quote. There's no wrong answer here. But maybe somewhere in the middle there, this quote just might make you think. And that's an opening to discussion. Katie wrote, Since the beginning of time, People have been trying to change the world so that they can be happy. This has never worked. Hmm, right? Makes you think, doesn't it? I know. I'm not saying I love it. I'm not saying I hate it. I just think it's something I'd like to share, and I think it makes me think. Maybe it makes you think, too. And that's the end for today. Hopefully you have a better understanding of this podcast after spending a little time with me and maybe even of your host. I just want to remind you that I am that person I put out there. I'm not trying to put on airs. I'm not trying to be somebody different. I'm not trying to seek fame or anything else. The only goal really of this podcast is, like I said earlier, to connect. I love to connect with people. Through my other podcast, I have connected with hundreds, say thousands of people over the the past three years. And I've met some just amazing people, people that I wouldn't meet probably outside of the podcast. Because we met on a intimate, personally challenging playing field. A place where we could, we had something in common. And that in common, that thing we had in common, allowed us to build on top of it and build a relationship. And later on, I learned about them and what they thought and what their politics were and what their beliefs were and what they do and if they're married and if they're not and whatever. And I would learn about that later. But I got to know the inside person first. That's been a true blessing. And if there's any way this podcast can do something like that, can help us meet on that level, then I think that would be pretty cool. I'm not here to tell you my view on things. I'm not here to tell you what's right and what's wrong because I don't really know. I have values. I have beliefs. But I also know they change over time. And I'm willing to be challenged. So if we bring an issue into this podcast, if we talk about something specific, if we, if I happen to throw out something controversial or whatever, which we might do, we, we probably will do. I want you to know I'm going to try to look at it from all sides. I'm going to want your input. I'm going to want input from different sources. We're going to just try to look at it. But in the end... We are not here to make any judgment. Instead, just to explore. Just to learn about life. Just to find new things. Just to be fascinated and curious and passionate about this world we live in. If we can do that, even a small piece of that, then I think we're on to something. Well, that's the end for today. Hopefully you have a better understanding of this podcast and of your host. I hope you'll come back and listen to later episodes. I'd like to see you there. 
Thanks for joining me today. Well, that wraps things up for today's episode of the Slow Lane Podcast. Please remember that this podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical or psychological advice. For a complete disclaimer, visit our website at slowlanepodcast.com. Also, if you have a suggestion, question, or just want to let us know how we did, please reach out. You can email us at feedback at slowlanepodcast.com or comment directly on our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. I'm really glad you took the time to drop by. Next time you turn on that blinker and shift down into the slow lane, I'll be here. Happy to see you, as always. Take care, enjoy the moment, and be at peace, my friend. I'll see you next time.